Alabama, a place where hundreds of teams have come to rest in peace. Their dreams of an upset going up in flames at the hands of the Crimson Tide. The Walk of Champions, led by Nick Saban, his Alabama team riding a nation-leading 11-game winning streak, led by the country's most efficient passer, A.J. McCarron. But tonight's opponent is also undefeated, with Tyler Russell and the Mississippi State Bulldogs determined to pull an upset. The motto for Dan Mullen's team has been, we believe. Tonight in Tuscaloosa, the truth will surface. It's the SEC on ESPN from Bryant Denny Stadium in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. The matchup tonight, the number 11 team in the country, Mississippi State, coming in against the number one team in the land. As you take a look at the SEC West standings, both undefeated, 4-0 and 3-0. Oh, and oh. Big game at hand tonight. For the first time in 70 years, both these teams undefeated as they get set to square off at Bryant-Denny Stadium tonight. Mississippi State won the toss and deferred. So Bell will kick. D. Miller and Cyrus Jones are back deep for Alabama. Brad Nessler with Ty Blackledge and Holly Rowe and about 102,000 of our closest friends. Alabama hasn't been pushed by anybody tonight. Ledge, could this be the night? Well, we'll see. I mean, uh, Mississippi State has played well. They've not played anybody the caliber of Alabama. And now there is a formula to beat Alabama, but you have to follow it, and they're like a reigning heavyweight champ. You're not going to win on technical points. You have to knock them out. Devin Bell to kick. 97th all-time meeting. One of the oldest rivalries in the SEC. And we're underway. Cyrus Jones about two yards deep. Across the 25 and down the sideline. Kicker's going to try to drag him out of bounds and will. But he got all the way out to the 42-yard line, 44-yard line maybe, as they'll spot it right in front of the Alabama bench. So A.J. McCarron, they'll have good field position to work offensively. And last week, this guy really came to life. Career-high 306 yards passing. Todd, we saw it. Well, he played extremely well, and you know, it was a, a thing where they were, the coaching staff was saying, we need our passing game to, to catch up with the running game, and they did that last week. Tennessee did a pretty good job stopping the run early. A.J. McCarron took advantage of it and threw the ball very well. They start at the 41-yard line. With Eddie Lacy with McCarron. He pump fakes and throws a screen back to Lacy going to the left side. Looked like he'd lose yardage, but he's dragging people out to the 47 for a pickup of six. McKinney and Jarrington in on the stop. Alabama's offensive line is the best in the country, and that sets everything up for their offense. That's what makes this offense special. It's not a, a wide receiver or a running back like it's been in the past. It's those five guys up front that distinguish this Alabama offense. Led by Barrett Jones, the center, about to snap it to McCarron on a second down and three. The stretch play to Lacey. Got the first down. And a couple more. Pick up a five. And Alabama's got its initial first down of the ball game. And already into Bulldog territory. One of the things that you have to do if you want to have a chance against Alabama, you got to be aggressive on normal downs, first and second, and try to create some negative yardage plays. If they stay ahead of the change and on schedule because of their line, very, very difficult to stop. From the 46 of Mississippi State, out of the shotgun, they throw the screen out to Cooper. We welcome those of you that have been watching Ohio State and their victory over Penn State. We're at Bryant-Denny Stadium in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, where the number 11 Mississippi State Bulldogs are meeting the number one team in the country, Alabama, on an 11-game winning streak. They haven't lost here since the LSU game last year. And right now, consensus number one of the BCS and rolling along. Both these teams undefeated at 7-0 atop the SEC West standings. And this one will tell a tale a uh, long ways toward figuring out who might head to Atlanta from the West 
for the SEC title game. Brad Nessler with Ty Blackledge and Holly Rowe. And already Alabama in Mississippi State territory at the 48-yard line. A.J. McCarron, nation's most efficient passer, is going to run it here and takes a slide down after a pickup of four. Nick Saban in his sixth season at Alabama, already two BCS titles here, one at LSU. And Dan Mullen, he's done a heck of a job in Starkville. Fourth year, 28 wins, 17 losses, and he's got his team undefeated coming in 7-0 and 3-0 in conference play. And his defense finds themselves in a situation that they want. Third down and long. This is not a comfortable down and distance situation for Alabama. They like to stay in third and five or less. So a couple good plays on first and second down play into the hands of this Mississippi State defense. Alabama, 46% of their third down conversions this year. They've already converted one tonight. McCarron is flushed out of the pocket. Does a little traffic direction, trying to get a block, and did he tip to out of bounds? Good enough for the first down. It looks like he might be a foot short. Mike Williams, the tight end, did a nice job of staying on a block as long as he could to try to secure that corner for McCarron. That's two plays in a row. The coverage downfield, excellent by the Bulldogs, forcing McCarron to leave the pocket. The, the strength of this Mississippi State defense is in the back end. Two outstanding corners in Banks and Slay and a couple of safeties who have played a lot of ball for this defense. They're going to bring the sticks all the way from the far side to see whether or not this is a first down. Just by the yellow line, I thought they were about the length of the football shy, but we'll take a look. It was a good kick return by Cyrus Jones to open up the game. You may or may not have had a chance to see that. It is about the length of the ball shot. And that set up Alabama with good field position. So they started at their 41 yard line. They're adjusting or taking off the knee brace of A.J. McCarron right now. Seeing if they have enough time. I think he's saying, I'll just go with the sleeve for now. And it is fourth down and a foot. Well, he injured the knee against Missouri two weeks ago. He wore the brace last week in Knoxville and I think he's decided now that uh, he can run a little faster without it. <laughs> extra tight end comes in Alabama four out of six on fourth down conversions this year they need about a foot at the 37 yard line of Mississippi State Barrett Jones is the leader of this line but their right tackle DJ Fluker is their most devastating run blocker that's him right here big number 76. So fourth down, less than one, and now the ship comes to the other side, and they're definitely strong to the right, as Todd said, including Fluker. Both tight ends join him over there. Fourth and short. Lacey goes that way. Wow, Boy, he had early. I think he got it, but he didn't get it by much. D. Arrington from the secondary came flying in there, met him in the hole, and then Eddie Lacey's 220 pounds with second effort got him the first down. This Mississippi State defense last year, I went back and watched the, the tape of the teams playing last year. And the first couple possessions, actually the first half, the Mississippi State defense kind of held their own. They knocked this offensive line around a little bit. Now they also had a guy in the middle, Fletcher Cox, who was a first round pick of the Eagles that yeah. they don't have anymore. So the drive continues here for the Crimson Tide. Both wideouts to the top of your screen. As they work from just outside the Mississippi State 35. Play action. McCarron. Long ball on the sideline and it's brought in by Norwood. Nice throw and catch to the 21 to pick up a 15. Really nice job by A.J. McCarron finding the matchup because Norwood was working on Skinner, a linebacker. They stay away from the corners. They work the inside receiver matched up on a linebacker and that's a matchup that favors the offense. Perfect pass to get it to the 21. T.J. Yeldon comes in now to the backfield for the first time. Eighth play of the Alabama opening drive of the ball game. And if you haven't seen this freshman, he's something else. The guy in the backfield with McCarron. He gets the call, and he pops through to the 11, maybe the 10. Might have another first down. I think he does. The thing that is unique about him is he's six foot two, 216 pounds, but watch how quick his feet are in the hole. He runs pretty upright, but he makes quick cuts and makes people miss, which is unusual for a guy that big in stature at the running back position. First and 10, just outside the 10. Alabama could get a first down, but to do so, they'd almost be in the end zone. Ninth play of the drive. It's carried them from their own 41. And in the shotgun, 
McCarron. Draw play. Yellow. Cuts it outside, inside the five, and touchdown. Well, that didn't take too long, did it? A.J. Ellen, seventh touchdown rushing of the year from 11 yards out. Jeremy Shelley in for the point after. Kick is perfect. The drive was as well. A short drive. Only took them 59 yards. Didn't take them long. Four and a half minutes to score on their home field first. Yeldon from 11 yards out. Tied 7 nothing. SEC on ESPN from Tuscaloosa, where the tide only took four and a half minutes for this touchdown. The lead set another. Nearly flawless execution on the counterplay. The last one, it starts with Quanjo closing in the backside. Steen is going to pull through, and Williams, one guy kicks out, the other guy leads through. They crash the side in, and then Yeldon shows that quick feet ability to make a cut, get to the outside, follow his walking nine plays. Beautiful execution, and especially on the touchdown run. Yeldon's seventh of the year. Kate Foster will tee it up. Talk about getting your crowd into it in the first five minutes of the ball game. Ladarius Perkins and Jamie and Lewis are back deep for the Bulldogs. It's a high short kick. It's going to be fielded at the eight by Perkins. Perkins, and he found an avenue across the 35 40. Ball is out. And I don't know, was it was a covered before it went out of bounds. Well, they're pointing that Mississippi State has maintained possession. Boy, luckily for them. Well, we talked about a formula that it takes to beat Alabama. One thing is you must win the turnovers. Coming into the game, Mississippi State leading the nation in turnover margin. You cannot afford to give the ball freely to Alabama because when they get it, they take advantage and usually score, but as it is, excellent field position to start for Tyler Russell in the Mississippi State offense. As Todd said, number one in the country, plus 17. It almost was plus 16 right there. And now Tyler Russell, empty backfield on the first snap, but great field position for the Bulldogs on their first offensive series. Blitz already coming. He's going to throw, complete, out to midfield. And that's Ladarius Perkins, the guy that's leading the SEC in rushing. Brad Nessler, Ty Blackledge, Holly Rowe. We've been waiting to see if anybody can challenge Alabama. What yeah. you don't want to do is give them a touchdown in the first half, uh, first four and a half minutes. Right. And, you know, defensively, you've got to take some chances. You've got to create some negative plays. They weren't able to do that on the first possession. And then offensively, you've got to control the football a little bit. And Tyler Russell has played beautifully this year, and he's played his best ball in their three SEC games. So Mississippi State and Alabama territory. Play action. Russell fires complete. It's going to be very close to a first down to Sylvester Hampfill as we check in with Reese Davis. Reese. Brad, very important games. The subject of our Internet Explorer quick highlight. Important the Legends Division of the Big Ten. Michigan's leading the way, but against Nebraska on the road, Taylor Martinez to a wide open Kenny Bell. Sort of threw him a helium balloon, but he caught it and went in. Martinez, 7 out of 809 yards in that touchdown. Huskers up by a touch. Reese, I know you have a big interest in what's going on right here. Alabama leading 7 0. But Mississippi State's got a first down at the tie at 45. Perkins. This is a tough team to run against. The toughest in the country. Loss of two. Tyler Russell, second most efficient quarterback in this conference to the guy that's on the other sideline. Yeah, I mean, figure this the two of them combined, McCarron and Russell. 31 touchdowns and only one interception between them. I mean, that's playing pretty doggone efficiently. Boy, I guess. Second down and long coming up. There's Tyler's parents and his little sister. Second down, 12. Perkins again, and again, no game. Dean what? Milner in the corner. One of the reasons that Alabama is so difficult to run on 
couple reasons. They play with great leverage. They, they very seldom get out of position, and then they are excellent tacklers. They don't miss many tacklers. You know, you see statistics, yards after contact. Yeah. That doesn't really show up against this team. They are excellent tacklers, so you get what you earn. And now can Mississippi State earn a first down? They're 43% on the year, but this is a long one. Third down at 12. Four receivers for Russell. They fake the draw. He stands tall and goes deep. And he's got his man down the sideline. Complete to Chris Smith. What a throw and catch. Over a couple defenders. Yeah, I think the safety, Dixon, Clinton Dix, thought he was going to get an interception. He underestimated the arm strength of Russell. He undercut that and went for a deflection or an interception. The ball sailed over his hand and right into the waiting arms of Chris Smith. A beautiful throw with a strong arm by Russell. And a pickup of 31 all the way down to the 16-yard line. Now back to the ground. Perkins maybe got two out of the deal. See, Dan Mullen told me this. He, when I talked to him on Thursday, he says, you have to run against these guys, but you can't run against them. So, <laughs> so what does that mean? That means you've got to convert some third downs to stay on the field because you have to at least show the semblance of balance and throw some runs at them. Red zone, nobody runs on Alabama. But they got a couple out of the last carry. Kirby Smart, the defensive coordinator, dialing up his defense. Mississippi State threatening here on this possession to try to even the ball game. Second down and eight. Russell rolls, not pressured yet. Now he is. And he finally throws it away. Adrian Hubbard was bringing some heat over there on the sideline. They had a little throwback built into that, but it was well covered. Alabama was not fooled. Everything, all the action went to the right, but there was one receiver that tried to slip out to the left side of the end zone that he was picked up, and Russell had to throw the ball away. That was the red zone offense for Mississippi State. 87% scoring points. They're hoping touchdown, not field goal. They've got a good tight end, too, and Marcus Green. Well, the matchup problem for Alabama is this guy right here, Bumpus. He's their leading receiver. He's working on a safety. Now he's in motion. On third down and eight, and now whistles blow. And Mississippi State took a timeout. Well, they know they may not have this many opportunities down in the red zone. They don't want to let one slip away. 6.54 remaining first quarter. Nick Saban not happy with his team, but he does have the lead, 7-0. ESPN College Football Finale, brought to you by UPS. Search UPS Football on Facebook. And by Arby's. Try the new Hot Turkey Roasters today. Disc golf teams this afternoon got together. Alabama, nine under, one by a stroke against Mississippi State. There's the trophy. Nice. Third down, Mississippi. Well, you know, Mississippi State took the timeout, but Alabama was the beneficiary because they were not making the proper adjustment to bump this going in motion. That's why Nick Saban and Kirby Smart were so upset. They want to pay attention to bump this wherever he goes. Bumpus is stacked up to the top as one of the two receivers that way. Russell goes to the corner of the end zone for Bumpus, and it's too far in front of him, incomplete. C.J. Mosley put a hit on Russell, and the Bulldogs will have to settle for a field goal attempt. Well, they have to settle and get some points. Last year in the game in Starkville, they had two possessions in the first half inside the 20-yard line and got no points. That game was 7-0 at halftime in Starkville. They missed two field goals a year ago. When you get in this red zone against Alabama, you got to come away with points. Alabama's only given up three points all year in the first quarter. We saw that last week in Tennessee. And now they block the kick. D. Milner with a block. They still have only given up three points in the first quarter. What a wasted drive by Mississippi State. Bell with Milner coming around the corner. Great diving block by the veteran quarterback.
College football in high definition is presented by Vizio. 3 0 Alabama still. Devin Bell, second time he's had a field goal block this year. You have to take advantage of points. And Marcus Green, the guy on the end, a senior tight end, stepped too far inside. He's got to get a piece of both those guys. And he did not get enough of Milner to slow him down at all. And Milner was able to come in there and stop the scoring threat. And that's just amazing defense. A lot of credit goes to Alabama. But in that particular case, that was a breakdown by Marcus Green on the special teams. And Mississippi State not getting any points. Can't waste opportunities against Alabama. We've said that a million times. And it rings true here in the first quarter again. Here's Eddie Lacy. And Lacey for about three as we check in with a third member of our team, Holly Rowe. How? Well, Alabama's quarterback, A.J. McCarron, and Mississippi State's quarterback, Tyler Russell, were, they're playing against each other tonight, but they were very nearly on the same team. They're both in the same recruiting class, and Nick Saban told us on Friday, as he remembers the recruiting story, they offered them both. They offered A.J. first, Tyler Russell, they offered second, and he decided he wanted to forge his own path. He's from about 90 miles away. His parents made the drive tonight. Things have worked out both for very well with both because they're both undefeated. That they are. Somebody's going to go home with a loss tonight. Here's A.J. McCarron on play action. Flares it out to the fullback Kelly Johnson. And he's about a yard shy. There is Slay over on the corner. Stopped him after a pickup of six. I think the difference that I've seen in A.J. McCarron the whole game last week and watching him on tape this year from last year you know, you, you want a quarterback to, to take what the defense gives you. It sounds like a cliche, but he always had a tendency to try to force things sometimes. And, and, and most young quarterbacks, they want to make the big throw all the time. He is playing within the system so much better this year than he was a year ago. Third down in the yard, Lacey, the tailback in the eye. They run the extra tight end over to the right. See if they go that way on short yardage. They actually go the other way. Lacey's got the first down anyway. As he picks up a couple, they'll move the sticks, and we'll check in with Reese Davis. Brad and Todd, Johnny Manziel is putting on a show about three hours away from you guys. He's accounting for 350 yards of offense and five touchdowns. Texas A&M now up 49-7 to on Auburn early in the third quarter on ESPNU. Oh, boy, things aren't going well in the Plains. I know the folks in this building don't care, but that is tough to watch. Right now, Alabama on the march here, leading by a touchdown. Play fake, quick throw out in the flat again. And that is the tight end, Michael Williams, who had a touchdown catch last week against Tennessee. Because this offensive line, and you got to include big Michael Williams, their senior tight end, who's 6'6", 270. You got to include him in that. Because they're so good, they are very difficult to get off schedule in their offense and, and they do a nice job of mixing run pass play action on early downs and they stay ahead of schedule and as long as they do that these guys can control the football game that front pick up of seven on the last play so second down to three and an end around coming Jones he's got the first down Christian Jones, Deontay Skinner made the tackle, but he, they'll move the sticks again. See, they run second and short. They run or they can throw. Now they get the first down. Now's a good situation to go play action again. A lot of times they get their big pass plays off of first down play action because you have to respect the run. They get the linebackers to sync up and try to get in there to stop the run, and you throw it over their head for a big play. Five for five, five different receivers. They haven't tried to dial one up to Amari Cooper yet, who had the huge game, best game ever, single game, as far as yardage for a freshman receiver for Alabama in the game we saw last week at Tennessee. McCarron, plenty of time. Long ball. Man out there. He's got him on the fly. Kenny Bell, touchdown. Fifty seven yards a strike to Kenny Bell. You run for the first down you go play action on first down and you beat their best cover guy. Jonathan Banks tweaked his knee a little bit last week. Didn't look great in that coverage situation and beaten badly by Kenny Bell. You're right. He looked like he was limping a little bit the last few yards there Todd. 
So another 80 yard drive by Alabama. Extra point is up and good. Less than 12 minutes into the game and the tie rolling at home up 14 zip in the first quarter. Our aerial coverage is being provided by the MetLife Blimp. See how MetLife can provide the coverage you need. MetLife, I can do this. 14 to nothing, Alabama. A.J. McCarron's 17th touchdown pass of the season. And it was a 57-yard strike, a perfect ball to Kenny Bell. And that is still the definition of taking what the defense gives you. You know, they give you the one-on-one -on -one situation, they bite on the play-action fake, go ahead and take a shot down the field, take advantage of what the defense gives you. For Kenny Bell, his third touchdown reception of the year. Kate Foster's kick. Again, it'll be returnable. Perkins from the four-yard line. The starting tailback only gets it to the 20. That's where the Bulldogs go to work. Two touchdowns down as we check in with Holly. Well, the team motto for Mississippi State this season has been We Believe. And the student body president put up a sign in campus recently, and it caught fire all around the world. People started tweeting in pictures of We Believe signs from the White House to Malaysia, Africa, Australia. Unbelievable showing of team support, school support from the Mississippi State fans. Now, not everybody believes. I did see someone say, hashtag, this is annoying, but you've got to be <laughs> impressed with their school spirit that you need to believe right now. I hope they're still believing on I believe the next time they get in the red zone, they better score. Nick Griffin in the tailback spot for Mississippi State. He gets it on a little counter up the middle, and a great run by Nick Griffin. Sophomore goes for almost 10. Well, they love to run the football, and the counter is their bread and butter play. They pull the guard and Hemp Hill, the, the tight end fullback guy, and they'll run this in a lot of different formations. They'll pull two guys. One guy kicks out, the other guy leads through. They run that several times from several different looks or formations. Same play, different looks. Second down and inches here. Griffin in a pistol set behind Russell, and now he'll flush out of that backfield. It's either a quarterback run or he's going to throw it. He will, and he throws a slant and throws a strike across the 40 to Malcolm Johnson. So on second and short, knowing that they could probably come back and get it on third down and inches, they decide to go to the air. The right tackle, Charles Sidaway, got up limping, and now he's down on the ground. They're going to have to bring in a backup right tackle for this play. Junior college transfer. Probably going to be Damian Robinson that will come in to take his spot at right tackle. Reminder for you, BCS countdowns on ESPN and ESPNU on Sunday, the day after the dust is settled. Our analysts will break down all the wins and defeats and what they mean as far as impacting the BCS standings who will rise and who will fall plus we'll look ahead to all the key matchups for next week BCS countdown presented by Vizio it's tomorrow at 8 30 Eastern on ESPN at 9 o'clock on ESPN you know what I like so far about Mississippi State other than the fact that they didn't execute on the field goal protection I like the way their offense has come out executing they look under control Tyler Russell's throwing the ball well they've mixed in a little bit of run and they're moving the ball on this Alabama defense. Both Perkins and Griffin in there with Russell and the shotgun. Alabama thinking about a blitz off the corner. Now Perkins comes over and sets in the slot. Russell waits and fires. Would have been a great catch. Yeah, that was, was a flag. Yep. Arcito Clark, the intended receiver. Milner. Was Milner. Yeah, he's their best cover guy. And he's an outstanding player. But he did have his back hand, I think, wrapped around the intended receiver. He made a play with his front hand, but his back hand, I think, had a hold of it. Pass interference, defense number 28. The penalty will place the ball on the foul and includes an automatic first down. D has already blocked a field goal tonight, tapping his shoulder pads as if, say, my fault. And See, the, the left hand was fine. The right hand was wrapped around Arcido Clark. And that's where the penalty came from. First penalty of the ball game 
puts Mississippi State back in Alabama territory to 46. At least they're getting into Alabama's end of the field. A lot of people don't even do that. Perkins. And again, he had to struggle to get two yards. Perkins came in as the number one rusher in the conference. 724 yards on the ground and eight touchdowns. Holly? Mississippi State right tackle Charles Sidway has run off the field. He was injured on the last couple of plays, but the good news is he did run off the field. It looks like he's back in the tunnel adjusting something. I just asked him, are you okay? He gave me the thumbs up, so hopefully he can return. Sophomore Damian Robinson is playing in his place. Second and long. Bumpus in motion. They haven't been able to get him the ball yet. Russell fires far sideline, and he get a foot down. Chris Smith, second time they'd run that kind of play to Smith. This time, he's out of bounds. Boy, nobody was on him either. Yeah, that's time. a wasted opportunity because there was a big hole between the corner and the safety. Sinceri was a little bit late getting over, and they missed opportunity that time for Tyler Russell. You know, when a guy is wide open like that, the, the key is to throw the ball right at him. Don't try to lead him. Don't try to make a perfect throw. If he has to stop to catch it, that's okay. But take advantage of the breakdown in coverage. Third down and eight. They faked the draw. They want to throw a screen, but they have to throw it away. Alabama was waiting on it. Perkins would have been the intended receiver. And C.J. Mosley and company were all over it. Well, Damian Square got the pressure, and that forced Russell to throw it a little bit before he wanted to, and he was inaccurate with the throw on the screen. This is a great punting team as far as not allowing returns. How about minus four? <laughs> well, we'll see if Swedenberg can knock one out of bounds down inside the 10. Fair catch taken at the 11, maybe the 12. And a penalty marker, wait a minute, going to be an interference on a fair catch. D. Arrington, you got to give him a little bit of room. Yep. Even though he made the catch, he still interfered. So just when you think you've got Alabama pinned a little bit, you give him another positive reinforcement with a penalty. You know, I was down on the field before the game. Interference with the opportunity to catch a kick. Kicking team number 38. The wind is blowing pretty hard from left to right, and that ball got hung up and drifted back towards the defense, and that's why the interference occurred. And instead of having them right around the 10, they're out to the 25. I think we got an unsportsmanlike conduct on Dan Mullen to boot. Another flag just flew in. You might have seen how close he was into the face of the officials. Here's the call. Unsportsmanlike conduct on the Mississippi State bench. He's still letting the side judge have it. I, you know, I, I mean, I understand the, the letter of the law, but if a guy cleanly makes the catch, I don't know why you have to call an interference with the ability to make a catch. I mean, if he bobbles it or whatever, or you bump him, I get it. And that's probably why Dan Mullen is so frustrated. And instead of Led starting at their own 12-yard line, they start at the 42 with back-to-back 15-yard -back penalties. D.J. Yeldon in the backfield with McCarron. Alabama leading by two touchdowns with a minute to go in the quarter. McCarron comes up throwing too high for Cooper. I'd get on that ball. You never know. And Mississippi State does, but they whistle. The play dead. First incompletion for McCarron. Can't complete them all. He comes close sometimes. Well, Typically, second and ten, if they throw incomplete on first down, Alabama comes back and runs. That's kind of the NFL mentality. Try to get at least part of the yardage back and then throw it on third down. Let's see if they hold true to that. He has a word with his tight end and his tailback, Yeldon. And now his tight end, Williams, on the move on second and ten. That will be what they do. And Yeldon might get the first down anyway. He does. Goes for 12 or 13. Again, that, that's the strength of this football team, the offensive line. Mississippi State knows runs coming. They're anticipating run, but watch the right side of the line. Fluker, the right tackle, the right guard, Anthony Steen, the tight end, just making a way for Yelp. They go hurry up here, go right back to Yelp. Up the middle for a couple, maybe three. 
as we're down to 40 seconds remaining in the quarter. We check in with Holly. Well, Alabama's exciting freshman wide receiver Amari Cooper has a slight leg injury on his right leg. After the first play of the game, they took him to the sideline, put a sleeve over that right leg. You guys can see the black sleeve there. He is noticeably limping. Also, Kenny Bell, number seven, has a very heavily taped left ankle. So, guys, they're already without two wide receivers for the season, DeAndre Wright. Chris Black and these guys are a little banged up tonight. Cooper goes out to the top of your screen on second and seven. As McCarron in the gun, fakes the handoff to Yeldon and fires out in the flat to Williams at tight end, puts his head down. And he's going to be right at the first down marker. I think he got it with his forward progress. Williams talking about some of the young guys, Yeldon in particular, and also Amari Cooper, both being true freshmen. And he said at Alabama, if you're good enough, you're old enough. <laughs> and those guys are good enough. Yeah, they are. And the quarter comes to a close. Dominated by Alabama on their home field. Tied already up a couple of touchdowns at the end of one here at Brian Denning. Just about set to start the second quarter. The Direct TV drive to the national championship bus here in Tuscaloosa. TJ at the wheel. And right now, AJ McCarron at the wheel of the Alabama offense to start the second quarter. And that long time between the uh, at the end of the quarter, a good chance to think over what they want to do. Perfect situation to go play action here for AJ McCarron in Mississippi State territory. First down. That's been their big throwdown a lot this year. They haven't trailed at the end of a regulation quarter in two years. How about that? From just outside the Mississippi State 35. And McCarran off play action is going to take a shot deep down the middle. Perfect strike complete to Amari Cooper down to the 11. Good call, Todd. Well, they started with a one formation, then they shifted out of it. Here's Cooper. He's going to run the deep drag. And again, you got to honor the run fake because of their ability to run. That buys time for that play to develop. And another accurate throw by A.J. And now they're down knocking on the door again at the 11-yard line. Last time they got to the 11, T.J. Yeldon took it 11. Right now, it's Eddie Lacy as the tailback. The fullback Kelly Johnson on a wing to the left side. That's where they're going to run. Lacey broke one tackle, couldn't get away from the second one. Nico Whitley, the safety, made the stop. See, if you can't, as a defense, put Alabama into some situations of duress, you can't stop them. And what I mean by that is, on first down, or second down, you've got to get some negative yardage plays. You've got to put them into some situations where they don't hold all the cards with the run or pass threat. And as long as they stay ahead of schedule with that offensive line, you are not going to stop them. They are always going to score in the red zone if they hold on to the football. That's the only time they have it so far this year. And just inside the nine, McCarron rolls, throws on the run a little bit high. Christian Jones got his hands on it and couldn't hold it. So it's going to bring up third down and long. And again, they can get a first down at about the one yard line. But to get to the one, they'd almost be to the end zone again, much like their earlier drive in the first quarter. We saw him get a touchdown pass to Williams, a tight end in a situation similar to this last week against Tennessee. That's Kenny Bell, who's already scored tonight, running out in a slot on the right side. Third down at eight. Bama at the Mississippi State nine yard line. McCarron lobs it. Williams, touchdown. Something happened to Jonathan Banks too. I, I think he was either fooled by the formation, thought he was gonna get help from inside, but he kind of went to sleep on the back side. It wasn't man-to-man -man coverage. And here's Banks, and watch as the tight end releases, he just kind of falls asleep, thinking the linebacker was going to go with the tight end. And that's an easy touchdown for A.J. McCarron that probably shouldn't have been there. 
Extra point is good. Alabama all over the Bulldogs right now with 13-33 remaining in the first half. Second week in a row, McCarron hooks up with his big tight end, Michael Williams, 21 to nothing, Crimson Tide. Bullies going, I wasn't expecting this. 21 to nothing in the second quarter as we continue Dr. Pepper's road to the championship here in Tuscaloosa. Celebrating its eighth year sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal. That's all state makes contributions to participating university general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kick. To date, all states contributed more than $2.8 million in scholarship monies. The only balls that have gone through those nets so far are the three extra points by Shelley after Alabama touchdowns, including the last one. It goes in the books as a 73 yard drive at eight plays, but 30 yards of that were by penalty. First interfering with the punt return, and then Dan Mullen with the unsportsmanlike conduct call on the sideline. So they basically didn't go 73 yards. Nonetheless, it was a nine yard touchdown pass, and it's 21 to nothing. From the goal line, there's Ladarius Perkins, and he's not going to make the 20 as we check in with Reese Davis. Reese. All right, Brad, time for Sports Center right now, presented by Discover Card. Number two, Florida went down against Georgia. It was a hail of turnovers. Jordan Reed, the last one, six turnovers. The Gators coughed up in the 17 9 loss to the Dogs. Dogs now in control in the SEC East. And USC's hopes of being a one loss team in the championship game gone as Arizona and Rich Rodriguez beat the Trojans 39 36. So a couple upsets today, not here so far. Mississippi State's got to dig itself out of a three touchdown hole if they're to pull a stunner over the number one team in the country. Bumpus in motion. Alabama showing blitz. Here comes Mosley. Russell throws into traffic. It's incomplete, intended for Bumpus. Yeah, I was a little bit behind him, and Dion Blue almost came away with an interception. Yeah, you mentioned the penalty on that last drive, and uh, it looked close, but by rule, it was the right call. You're not a, the kicking team player cannot be within one yard directly in front of the receiver. The wind held the ball up. It was the right call. Dan Mullen argued on the field, got the additional penalty, and you don't want to help Alabama. Tyler Russell's only hit one of his last six passes. And penalty markers down. Going to have a delay a game or a false start. One of the two. False start. Dan Mullen talked a lot this week about trying to stay loose, trying to stay relaxed so that his team would stay relaxed. Everybody knew it was a huge game and a huge opportunity, and they were thankful to be in this position. But he didn't want them to come in here tight. And uh, they can't afford to get tight right now either. Alabama has a tendency to make you tight. Second and 15, play fake. Russell, pressure, down he goes at the five. Denzel Duvall, a freshman linebacker with a sack. Well, he just whipped Blaine Clausel, the left tackle. I mean, it was only a four-man rush. It wasn't a, a huge pressure package, but he just goes right around him. First of all, Quentin Dial on the other side caused Tyler Russell to move in the pocket. He just took the back and put him right back in the quarterback. And to add insult to injury or injury to insult, Clausell is the guy that's down. Three hundred pound left tackle that went down at the end of that play. They're checking on him. We'll check on him when we come back. ESPN College Football Finale brought to you by Hyundai. Go online and show your loyalty to your school at HyundaiShowYourLoyalty.com. And the Venture Card from Capital One. Earn double miles you can actually use. That clock's about 20 minutes slow. It's 21 to nothing. 
at 21. At 21 to the clock, and we'll get it around to about where we are with 13.06 remaining in the first half. There it comes. There it comes. Back in Tuscaloosa. Time's running out on Mississippi State. They're going the wrong way, Todd. Well, they've had four third down situations. All of them have been third and eight or more, and that is uh, a recipe for disaster against Alabama. You would think they'd just play this safe and try to kick here on third and 23. Nope, they're going to throw from the end zone. Incomplete. Hubbard got a piece of that pass intended for Josh Robinson. Now they're going to be punting from deep in their own end zone. Alabama's defense through seven games has averaged only 58 snaps a game. They play a lot of people anyway, and when you play less than 60 snaps, nobody's going to get excessively tired. That's why they are fresh and flying around for the entire football game. Swedenberg deep in his own end zone hasn't had a punt block this year, and the return is on for Alabama. On the other end, Jones, tough catch, right about at the 49, and he gets three or four out of the return. Met Life's getting it done. Our focus on Alabama. Certainly, that's where the focus lies right now because they've scored three touchdowns. First, it was TJ Yeldon from about 11 yards out. His seventh rushing touchdown of the year, then A.J. McCarron going to work. Deep ball. On the other end is Kenny Barrett, who rings up a 57 yarder. And then just moments ago, Michael Williams back in the end zone, the tight end for a nine yard score. And that's where we are, 21 and other. And it's all set up and made possible by that offensive line. The best in college football, that's what distinguishes this Alabama offensive football team. They start at the 47. Here's a stretch play to Eddie Lacy. And he goes down, trying to follow his own blockers, but trips himself up as we check in with Holly. Well, guys, Amari Cooper was over here receiving treatment on the Alabama sideline on his right ankle. Now, they're using this really cool machine. It's called cryotherapy. It's basically cryogenic. They use a nozzle and put this cold air. It looks like a vacuum, but they blew this cold air onto his right ankle. It's like instant ice pack. It helps the inflammation stay away. Athletic trainer Jeff Allen getting him on the field quickly with this high technology. Got a feeling on the sideline, Holly's not going to use that. It's a little cool out here tonight. <laughs> Second down, 11. Play fake and a bootleg by McCarron. He might just keep this. There's a lot of green in front of him. It closes in a hurry, but he does pick up four as Darius Slays, the guy that made sure he didn't get any farther down that sideline. Now, this is where the Mississippi State defense has to capitalize now. They got a negative yardage play finally on first down. Then they forced the scramble on second down, and now they're a little bit out of their comfort zone. Third down and seven is a little bit longer than Alabama likes to be in on third down. Yeldon stays in the backfield. Three wide receivers. And the tight end in there for McCarron and the shotgun. Extra rusher coming and McCarron throws incomplete intended for Christian Jones. And Love made the hit. Brings up fourth down. They brought a little pressure that forced the hot throw from A.J. McCarron and good coverage by Love. So the negative play on first down set them up for success on third down. And that's what you have to do to slow down the Alabama offense. Wasted good field position there at the 47-yard line. And so Cody Mandel is not the busiest guy in the world. The Alabama punter will kick. Jonathan Banks, who we think is him limping around a little bit his back is the return man averaging right up about 10 yards per return and over end punts Banks takes a hit at the end of it flag flies in D Milner who came down there made contact that's going to be the second penalty on Milner despite the fact that he blocked a field goal tonight Ken Williamson, the head of our officials tonight, the referee. Banks clearly hey, signaled fair, fair catch. Kicking team, number 28. 15 yard penalty, first down. So that's going to give them better field position for sure as they'll go out across the 20 yard line. So far, it's been all Alabama. Mississippi State on offense, though, when we come back.
Want to get your NFL Sunday started off right tomorrow, 10 o'clock Eastern. Chris Berman in the game for Ryle. The latest news and updates from stadiums around the league right up to kickoff at 11 on ESPN News. Robert Flores, Matthew Perry, and Tim Hasselbeck give you all the info you need for your fantasy teams on Fantasy Football Now. Sunday NFL countdown presented by IBM at 10. Fantasy Football Now presented by Papa John's at 11 on ESPN News. Mississippi State goes to work at its own 21-yard line, trailing by 21. A handoff to Darius Perkins. He's had a tough time getting going, but he did get five yards on that carry. Fifteen seconds yep. Alabama has trailed this year. They were down seven to six to Ole Miss, and that lasted until they kicked the ball <laughs> off. <laughs> and it was returned 99 yards by Christian Jones for a touchdown, and that was that. I'm pretty sure Oregon wasn't behind today either. They whipped up 70, didn't they? I think. I think at least. Second down at five, low snap, the shotgun. Russell fires to the far side, incomplete. And I'm not quite sure who that was intended for. Lewis was the short man of the two receivers, and there was one a little bit farther out in front of it that fell between the two. Tyler Russell's got to kind of get it zeroed back in. He, uh, he's four for 11. He's missed his last five throws coming into the game. Very accurate, completing 60%. Marcy there on the left, Mom. She's standing. He needs she to still make believes. Throw right here. Third and five. Empty backfield. Perkins flares out to the left. He's looking left. But the pass is too short to be a first down. Robert Johnson made the catch, but he's two yards shy of the first down. That's just beautiful third down defense by Alabama. They bring pressure, so they force the hot throw, and then they make the sure tackle short of the first down. I mean, they, they bait you into the throw. Here comes the pressure. They bait you into the throw, and then they tackle them short of the first down. They force the quarterback to throw hot, and then they tackle the receiver before he can get the first down. And that's just excellent defensive execution by Alabama. You saw Benny Sanceri go airborne, and Russell had to kind of throw it over the top of him. Hunt, Cyrus Jones with a fair catch call, and he'll take it at the 32-yard line. 9.42 remaining in the half. Alabama's got the ball and a three-touchdown lead. The SEC on ESPN when we come back. 9.42 remaining in the first half. All Alabama, 21 to nothing. A.J. McCarron coming into tonight is completing over 85% of his passes on play action deep down the field. The play fake makes the linebackers respect the run. And in this case, redshirt freshman linebacker Ben Derrick McKinney gets faked up. That opens up something behind him, and then the big chunk plays down the field. The wide receivers on the left run off the deep coverage. The play fake holds the underneath coverage, and A.J. McCarron finds the hole in between them. And they've done that all season long off of their play action. McCarron, 9 out of 12, throwing the football here in the first half. That means he's gone 251 passes without an interception. Last interception he threw was last year against Mississippi State. He's in trouble right here. Might not be able to throw. Now he finally does across his body, incomplete. T.J. Yeldon on a crossing route was a little bit high, but maybe could have had it. Preston Smith was applying the pressure on McCarron. And we've talked about this offensive line enough tonight, and uh, we had the opportunity yesterday to sit down with Barrett Jones, and uh, <laughs> what a delightful guy. I mean, <laughs> I as fine of a of a football player and, and a person and a representative of a university as, as I've ever been in contact with. Really an outstanding young man. He's been a good probably half an hour, 45 minutes with him. It was something else. Here's Yeldon behind Barry Jones. Tripped up, but he got across the 35 to the 36. Chris Hughes made the tackle. Let's check in with Holly. Well, guys, the amazing thing about Barrett Jones, the center for Alabama, is three days after they won the national championship in January, he had a meeting with Nick Saban, and Nick said, hey, would you mind moving to center? Well, he's never played center before, so he got out of the meeting. He said, sure. He had to go teach himself how to snap. He's done a terrific job, and he could possibly win 
three national championship rings at three different positions on the offensive line. Just remarkable. Yeah. Might, might win another Outland Trophy or at least a Remington Trophy playing center. But they've got Cyrus Quanjo out there at left tackle now. They knew how talented he was. So Barrett moves to the inside where he makes a lot of the calls. McCarron down the middle. And Cooper breaks one tackle, not the second one. He's going to be a yard short of the first down. Wells and Banks hold on for dear life so Cooper couldn't get to that first down marker. Well, Barrett Jones was the left tackle last year. He started at right guard for 25 games earlier in his career, and now he's holding his own on the inside. And I think he likes center because he is responsible for all the protection calls. He's a very smart guy, loves to study film, watches film kind of with a quarterback mentality, and uh, what, what a great leader of this unit. So Mandel's got a punt again. The problem is Mississippi State's offense hasn't been able to do anything about producing offensively when they get the ball. Deep kick. Banks has to let it go. It bounces at the five. I think it made the end zone by about the length of the football. Very close. John Fulton almost saved it from going in there. Milner was down there as well. Well, as long as the ball stays out of the end zone, the body can go in. But if the ball crosses the plane, right there. which it does, good call. And Mississippi State gets the ball out of the 20. And I think they've got to try to make something happen on first down. I mean, it has been tough sledding against this Alabama defense. They haven't gotten only one explosive play. That 31-yard pass in the first quarter is all they've been able to generate against this Bama defense. And as we said, you can't run on Alabama, and Perkins hasn't been able to. But they'll give him another try. Still, that's the hardest yard you're going to get. You know, one of the best recruiting classes in the nation again for Kentucky. John Calipari and his Wildcats reloaded, ready to defend their national championship. Don't miss our exclusive multi-part series coverage of one of the top basketball programs in the country. All Access Kentucky, Wednesdays at 7 Eastern on ESPN. Kentucky in the preseason polls, number three behind their arch rival Louisville and Indiana. They're talking about that Wiggins reclassifying and coming out next year, and if he goes to Kentucky, that might be the best class they've ever had. Exactly. <laughs> Russell throws across the middle and completes. Big hit by Robert Lester, the senior safety. One of the problems with this Mississippi State offense They've been efficient, and they've got some wide receivers that have played a lot, a lot of experience. Bumpus, Smith, and Clark combined 95 starts, but they don't have any Blazers. They don't have anybody that really is going to threaten the defense vertically. And so Alabama is really squeezing the routes right now. And the tie defense has shut out Bumpus so far with seven minutes remaining in the half. Russell, pressure coming again across the middle, completes. Out to the 30, and that's Clark. And it's going to be close to a first down. Depends on the size of the foot of the lineman. Linesman. Now it's not going to matter. Flag down. It's coming back. Finally get a positive play. Yeah. And it goes back right into your own huddle. Holding. Offense, number 75. Ten yards the spot. Lossell, the down. left tackle. We got run over for a sack earlier. Comes up with a holding call here. Well, there he is on the left side. Kind of working on an island. No help. And as he feels Hubbard getting by him, he just instinctively grabs and, gra and holds. And that drew the flag. So just when it looked like they were going to be close to a first down, it's third down and 19. Third time they've been in third and 10 or longer, and you don't want to do that against the Alabama defense. And whistles stop play, another flag down. You mentioned you don't want to be third and 10 or longer against Alabama. Right now, land game offense. Still third down. When Alabama's defense gets you in third or ten plus, their opponents have only converted one time out of 34 attempts. I mean that 
mean, there's there's not even a percentage for that. No. that that's just poor. That's possible. That's one for the season. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure they haven't given up a third and 24. Russell at his own goal line. They'll play it safe with a draw play to Perkins. Cuts it outside. Mosley tracks him down though at the 12-yard line. And it's punting time again with a little over six minutes remaining in the half. They got one positive yardage play and then a penalty. And then another penalty. And all of a sudden, you're punting back by your own goal line again. Third straight three and out for Mississippi State. Swedenberg again in his own end zone. A little bit of a rugby style punt again. And Cyrus Jones takes it at the 43 yard line. Alabama's defense pitching another shutout. And coming into this game, they have dominated everybody. 8.3 points allowed is all. Less than 200 yards total offense. Number one in just about every category you can come up with for a defense. And they swarm around. They don't give you first downs. They don't give you touchdowns. And look at the numbers. And again tonight, 15 rushing yards, 57 through the air so far. Yeah. And, and when you look at those season numbers, if you looked at last year's defense, which I thought was the best defense I've seen in college football in many, many years, the numbers are almost identical. They, they have not dropped off one bit. Play action, McCarran. Whoa. Took a nasty spill. Remember, he hurt his ankle in the Missouri game. Todd mentioned it earlier. McKinney with the blitz from his middle linebacker spot brings him down. First sack of the night, loss of 13. Well, this is what you have to do. You have to take some chances. You got to be aggressive on first down and try to create some negative plays. And that time, McKinney was able to get by DJ Fluker, who's a great run blocker, but not a terrific pass blocker. And now you put them a little bit behind schedule, which is not where they're the strongest. 13 yards behind schedule. Second down and 23. Screen down here. Or run. Lacey. That'll be third down and 23. Charrington with the stop. Big defensive lineman, 335 pounder. See, it's just so hard to get them off schedule, but when you do, you take them out of their comfort level. You, you, this offensive line likes to be third and five, third and six, where there's always the threat of a run or a draw play. And now when you put them third and 10 plus, this is not where they are at their best. They need to get all the way to the 47 yard line of the Bulldogs for a first down. So you would imagine they'd play something safe here, try to get part of the yardage back and then punt. There's the screen that Todd called for in the last play. Lacey gets out to about the 34 with his forward progress before Autry brings him down. And so third straight three and out for Alabama, but Mississippi State hasn't done anything about it offensively. Yeah. The only good thing is they should have better starting field position here. That was a good defensive possession that time for the Bulldogs. So Mandel a punt. Third straight three and out. Alabama. Mandel really got a hold of his last punt, but it just made it into the end zone. High kick, Banks making a fair catch. Nice to get out of the way. One of his own players was there, and it's going to roll all the way down to the six yard line. Well, Looked like they were going to have good field position, but they sort of messed up the return and they won't have good field position when we come back. Mississippi State deep in its own territory again from the four yard line. Russell fires in and out of the hands of Smith. Good coverage on the sideline by Ha Ha Clinton Dix. Todd, you know, you. To have any chance against Alabama, you have to be not necessarily perfect, but you got to play well in every phase yep. facet of the game. That last punt, if they just field that thing and one of the guys doesn't get in front of Jonathan Banks, they got decent field position, right. but they let the ball go all the way to the four of uh, the six yard line. Can't do that.
Perkins on a little counter, trying to weave his way out across the 10, did to the 11, maybe. And we're under three minutes. Well, at least they have a somewhat manageable third down situation here. Coming before this down, they've averaged the average distance needed on third down was over 13 yards. And we already mentioned how difficult it is if you get 10 plus against this team. You saw the struggles for Ladarius Perkins. This is the shortest third down they've had tonight. Third down at five. Started in a pistol set and that Perkins again goes up to the top of your screen. Russell hits one of the on rushing linemen. Jesse Williams, the big nose tackle, swats that one down. Well, the Mississippi State offensive line's got to hold up a little better. That's DePriest, the linebacker Ooh. who came unblocked. And Russell didn't have any chance to really step into that throw. Williams got the deflection, but Trey DePriest came unblocked and put a, a lick on the quarterback. What's that one tattoo Jesse Williams has got? Fear is uh, a liar. <laughs> I, I think, think that's it. it. Fear yeah. is a liar. That's just one of the many, but that's a pretty big. You can have that in very big uh, graphics when you got arms up there. I think that one's on the side of his head, actually. <laughs> Cyrus Jones. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm not joking. <laughs> Let's check in with Reese. <laughs> All right, Brad, coming up at halftime in just a few moments on ABC right now, Notre Dame and Oklahoma are in a defensive struggle. Fighting Irish have the edge at the moment. We had some top ten upsets, a couple hoping to be in that one loss pool if they get there for national championship game eliminated and we'll also see how the Ducks impressed as expected and the Cats really impressive Wildcats of Bill Snyder roll past Texas Tech we'll see you in a little bit all right race seven straight overall three and outs here between these two teams but the score Alabama before that put up three touchdowns so with two minutes five seconds left they've got the ball on a three touchdown cushion with good field position and all their timeouts remaining yeah. I think you work the two minute offense here good opportunity for McCarron Throws it out to Williams. That's going to get him into Bulldog territory, close to a first down. At the 45-yard line is there's the fear is a liar. You're right. Yeah. It's on the right side of his head. Okay. Well, he had a mohawk and he shaved that, and and then everybody could see that tattoo because he had a little bit longer hair. He shaved it all off, and now you can see what he has written on the side of his head. I'm not going to question him about it. That is a big, strong dude now. Bench press is over 600 pounds. If we, if we say one more thing about him, he's going to bench press one of us yeah. when the game is over. Put whatever he wants on the side of him. You bet. We're not going to argue with him. Second down in a yard. Going to go deep. McCarron. Jones with a catch. And he made it at the 22, sliding out of bounds. Number 22 with a 22-yard pickup. See, this was a perfect situation. You, you mentioned the three straight three and outs. Now you got two minutes. You got three timeouts. Be aggressive. Work the two-minute offense. Work the clock. Could have been a horse collar tackle called maybe at the end of this as well. Guess not. I think he reached him down below the net line. But a beautiful throw by McCarron. Under two minutes. Threatening again, Alabama offensively at the 22-yard line. And the officials maybe are going to take a look at this play. Maybe Dan Mala challenged whether or not he was in bounds. I don't know. They're going to have a chat with him anyway. Oh, he's got a smile on his face for this one. Early on the field, the ball was caught in bounds. The player went out of bounds. Mississippi State coach is challenging the catch was out of bounds. The previous play is under further review. So might as well take a look. Yeah, I think Dan figures that challenge may not be worth much in the fourth quarter. Exactly. At this point. So let's see if we can get it looked at. Secure catch. Matter of that right foot was the toe all the way in the green when he made the catch. So might give her a, give us a better look here. The left foot's oh, yeah, down. Left foot's down. Only need one. Looks like he got the left foot down, oh, and yeah. the right is down too. I think he got both of yep, them in. Sure did. As the grass the flies, 
How about the throw, though? Perfect. Right over the shoulder. Impossible to defend. That one's good in the NFL. The left foot was down when he had possession, and then the right foot, you could still see green between the chalk mark and the tip of his cleats. After further review, ruling on the field is confirmed. Mississippi State is charged with a timeout. He's lost their challenge for a man with the ball game. So Alabama with 151, plenty of time. They might just start running this football right here and let some of the clock wind off here to not give Mississippi State a chance offensively. They haven't given much of a chance so far, that's for sure. They're going to have their hands right around and throw to the Bulldogs if they put up another touchdown and lead 28 to nothing at the break. D.J. Yeldon flanking A.J. McCarron in the shotgun. First down tied at the Bulldog 22. They fake it to Yeldon. McCarron throws complete to Williams at tight end. He stepped out of bounds at the 17 or just inside the 17. One thing we haven't seen from Alabama yet that they like is a quick wide receiver screen, kind of the tunnel screen, anticipating a potential blitz here from Mississippi State on this down or the next down. Wouldn't be surprised to see that before this drive is over. So far, this has been a clinic. For Nick Saban's top ranked Crimson Tide in the first half. The stretch play, Yeldon, a little juke step got back to the line, but it was Autry who forced the play back inside. And no gain on that one, but the clock will wind down here. And we'll have a third down and uh, close to five coming up. And Alabama has all three of their timeouts. No uh, sense of panic here. They don't want to leave very much time on the clock if they do get into a scoring situation here anyway. Here's a third and five. They need to get to the 12-yard line for a first down. As they'll take this snap with about a minute left in the half. McCarron, pressure coming, had it batted down by Cameron Lawrence, the outside linebacker. Cameron Lawrence got his hands on that ball. You realize the last interception that A.J. McCarron threw was last year against Mississippi State. Cameron Lawrence was the guy who made the pickoff. Yep, he almost had that one. Yep. So a guy that hasn't missed a field goal yet this year, there aren't too many people in the country that can make that claim, although he hasn't tried that many either. Jeremy Shelley, eight for eight. McCarron to hold. It'll be a 34 yard field goal attempt to try to make it 24 to nothing. Kick out of the way, and it's perfect. So last year, it was a 24 to 7 Alabama win. Right now, they lead 24 to nothing, and we're not yet at halftime. Now, A.J. McCarron, the thing about him is he is playing within the system. He takes what the defense gives. If that's a dink or a dunk, He'll take it. If it's a down throw, field down the throw, he does that, and he has been accurate. It starts with protection, but it all comes back to the quarterback seeing and feeling the defense playing within the system and being accurate with the football, and he's off to another brilliant night tonight. 14 out of 19. You see his season number, 69% basically. 16 touchdowns without a pick. Two more touchdowns tonight. And when you talk about pass efficiency I mentioned that earlier that he's number one in the country in pass efficiency and that's kind of a strange thing pass efficiency you take the yards per completion multiply that by eight times four you take the number of passing touchdowns multiply that by 330 then you take total number of completions and multiply it by 100 add those results together then you subtract the total number of interceptions times 200 but once you get to that figure you divide the number the total number of attempts and you come up with your pass efficiency which in his case was leading the country at 183. <laughs> It's kind of a complicated. Pat, Pat's the only guy that understands that. I know. I'll, right? give, I'll give that to Pat. Jeez. Here's a kick. A yard deep. Perkins will bring it up. 
Across the 20, out to the 23, maybe the 24-yard line as we check in with Holly. Well, when we talked to Alabama coach Nick Saban on Friday, he told us that A.J. McCarron has come a long way with his decision-making. He said early in his career, he would force it in there in a heartbeat. But that's where he's grown the most. As you guys have mentioned, no interceptions this year. He's incredibly efficient, and you can see that growth. We did their game early in his last year, his first road start against Penn State. The growth has been tremendous, and Nick Saban just greeted his quarterback as he came off the field. I think he likes where his progress is taking him. Yeah. And you know, Holly, the other thing he said, not just his decision making, but his leadership, he's impressed with this year. The command he has of everything that they're doing offensively. Guy that was right behind him in pass efficiency in this conference, Tyler Russell, fires a first down pass, the first first down since about three minutes left in the first quarter for Mississippi State. Trying to muster something here in the last half minute of the half. They don't have the chain set yet, but they go with a hurry-up offense. They do get them set now. Russell crossing route. Oh, man. Wow. It hit the umpire, or it would have hit C.J. Mosley yeah. right in the chest. Yeah, and he doesn't usually drop those. Wally Huff, the intended receiver, our umpire. And Wally's going to take one right in the breadbasket. Luckily, not lower than that. And you saw C.J. Mosley was right behind him. <laughs> 25 seconds remaining. Russell pressure throws complete. Finally, they get one to Bumpus. It's not a big gainer, and he's got three guys draped all over him for a pickup of seven. Got one timeout remaining, down to 10 seconds. They could pick up a deep out here. Somebody might have had a shot at a Hail Mary, but the time is wasting. This will be the last play. And they get it across the middle, but clock runs out. Should have used the timeout. I don't understand. At least give yourself a shot to throw it to the end zone. Last 28 games. They've either led or been tied at halftime, and they've got a huge lead here at halftime, and when they've got a halftime lead with Nick Saban, they almost never lose. Let's check in with Holly. Coach Saban, you were worried about Chad Bumpus and how you guys would match up in that screen game. You've limited him to one catch in the first quarter. How would you describe how you've been able to do that? Well, you know, we, we, we got to do a better job of covering him. We haven't stopped him all the time. We've made some big plays on defense to get him stopped. They've had bad field position, so we're going to have to do a much better job of covering in the second half. Went to kind of the two minute drill there to end the half and as AJ came off after you have the field goal what was your conversation with him about. Oh you know we got some run pass options you know built into some stuff and hey, we're just talking about what we could have done and what we should have done and we'll get it fixed. All right thanks coach. Right, thanks. The Tide 56 and 3 under Nick Saban when they lead at halftime. They've got a huge halftime lead here 24 to nothing as we send it to Reese Davis and the guys in the studio for the halftime report fellas. <laughs> You're watching the SEC on ESPN. 97th all-time meeting. One of the oldest rivalries in the SEC. Draw play, Yeldon. Cuts it outside, inside the five, and touchdown. McCarron, plenty of time. Long ball, man out there, he's got it on the fly. Kenny Bell, touchdown. McCarron lobs it, Williams, touchdown. So far, this has been a clinic. And the SEC on ESPN just about set to start the third quarter at Bryant Denny Stadium in Tuscaloosa. And it's all number one Alabama right now. 24 to nothing, pitching a shutout against the Bulldogs of Mississippi State. Welcome back to Tuscaloosa. Brad Nessler and Todd Blackledge somewhere in there. I guess I said it was a clinic. Yeah. And now either Mississippi State better call the doctors. You look at the stats <laughs> over my shoulder because I don't know if there's a prescription yeah. that you can fill to beat these guys right now. Well, I, I, I'm kind of tickled by the fact that Coach Saban told Holly, you know, we got to fix a few things. Yeah, I know. I mean, I'm looking at this sheet. I mean, they held them to 105 yards of offense. They averaged over seven yards of play for their own offense. I guess the only thing they could fix, they were two of seven on third down. So they, they got to do a better job on third down. So they definitely got to clean that up a little yeah. bit, don't they? Well, I told you last week at the end of the game that he would say to Holly in the postgame <laughs> comments, we can't turn the ball over even with our second unit because they fumbled and gave up a late touchdown to Tennessee. And that's exactly what he told Holly. So always in search of perfection. Yeah. So far, they've been close to it tonight. 
Mississippi State will get the football first to start the third quarter. That's the good news for them if they can do something with it offensively. Cade Foster will start us off. And the kick again high and short. And it goes to LaDarius Perkins at the six. And he's not even going to get it to the 20. Great play on the special teams again by Alabama as we check in with Holly. Mississippi State coach Dan Mullen said there were some positives in the first half. You know, they were able to move the ball, but he said we're doing all of the little silly things you can't do against a team like Alabama. Namely, they had two first downs called back because of penalty. They dropped that punt that gave Alabama, that put them in terrible field position. He said those are the things you can't do against the number one team in the country. And Todd, that was part of your formula. You can't help Alabama in games like this. No, they're tough enough to beat if you're playing well. Mississippi State didn't do itself any good favors on that kick return. They start inside the 20 again. Now Russell rolls to throw. Fires on the run and completes. It was intended for Clark. And it was Dion Blue, the cornerback hovering. Mississippi State, we talked about the guys that would have to get the job done. And they've held Bumpus to one catch for just seven yards. Two and a half yards of carry for Perkins, who came in leading the SEC in rushing, and not the normal night that Tyler Russell's had through the first seven weeks of the season. The most amazing thing to me about this Alabama team is the efficiency that their defensive pl has played with after losing what they lost last year to the draft. And this one only gets to the 20. We talked about this last week. You said, you know, all those number one picks are guys that were number one type draft choices to the NFL last year. Maybe not quite the same this year. Yeah, I mean, they lost five guys in the first 35 picks of the draft last year. I don't see the same type of guys, but this team is playing at a higher level. And I don't know if that means they're, they're easier to coach or they, they've got something to prove or whatever it is. They are fundamentally sound and they are absolutely shutting everybody down that they play. Third down and eight. Russell flushed out of the pocket. Wants to throw on the run. Finally does, but it's incomplete. It's knocked down by Blue again. And there was a holding penalty. I mean, C.J. Mosley was coming on the pressure and got tackled. And it'll be declined, and they'll still have to punt. But, I mean, C.J. Mosley, to me, typifies this defense. He's an undersized linebacker. Holding. Offense, number 75. Penalty is declined. Fourth down. You know, he's 6'2", 235 pounds, but he doesn't look that big. He doesn't play in regular. He plays a lot in the second and third down, but he just plays relentless. He's got great speed and athleticism. He's the leader of this defense, has played well every game. And, uh, you know, again, he's not necessarily a first-round draft pick type, but a hugely productive college football player in this defense for Alabama. Swedenberg to punt. Again, he lines up to take a couple steps to his right before he punts it. That's a good kick. Cyrus Jones camps under it back inside the 35-yard line where Alabama will go to work offensively for the first time in the second half with a 24-point lead. Welcome back to Tuscaloosa, Alabama, up 24-0 on Mississippi State. Well, these are the signs. This is the hound's tooth pattern made famous by Coach Bear Bryant. It's an old Scottish clan tartan that symbolizes strength, and it's seen everywhere here in Tuscaloosa. But even more significant tonight, the great-granddaughter of Bear Bryant, Lissa Tyson, was named homecoming queen. I spoke to her shortly after this award. She said this has been an amazing experience. Her father, Mark, that you see helping her with her crown there is Bear's grandson. And they said she's been coming to homecoming games since she was a little tiny girl. She said our family has been such a part of this culture to now be the homecoming queen just makes it that much more special. The coach is smiling from above, or should I say grumbling from above. He's doing one of the two. First down, Alabama with a 24-point lead. Stretch play to Annie Lacey. Going to the sideline. Lacey and Yeldon basically came in with almost the same amount of yardage on the ground for Alabama. The one-two punch. Eddie with eight rushes. He's had to earn it tonight as Mississippi yeah. State's run defense has been pretty good. Lacey's done a really good job this year of staying healthy. You know, he's had some injury issues in his past. He had a really bad toe injury last year that required pretty substantial surgery. He's done a great job of rehabbing from that and and playing through that this year and 
really staying on course. A second down at six. He'll get it again. And he runs in to the Mississippi State defense and keeps on grinding. And he's close to a first down. That looked like it was going to be about a yard gain, and he took tacklers with him for three more yards. Talk about Yeldon and Lacey, and a lot of people don't realize that Alabama lost two backs that were part of their regular rotation. D. Hart was injured in the Ole Miss game, a knee injury, and also Justin Fowler, who did more than just play running back. I mean, he was kind of an H back, a full back, a tail back, a leader on the team. They lost both of those guys, and so it's really down to Yeldon and Lacey. They also have Kenyon Drake, who plays some a youngster, but those two guys carry the bulk of the load. Play fake. McCarron throws on the run and diving for it. Going to the ground to get it is Cooper for the first down. Pickup of 18. You know, at halftime, Phil Savage, who has a, a long history in the NFL and does the color commentary for the Alabama radio, came in the booth and he asked me, what do you think of AJ? And I said, you know, I, I really like him. I love the way he's playing. The thing that's a little bit hard to evaluate is you don't see him under duress. You don't see him in situations because their offensive line is so good, because their running game is so good. He just has doesn't have to do too many things under duress. Only sacked once tonight by McKinney, who came out of blitz straight up the middle. And here he is going deep, and it is bobbled and drops. Darius Slay should have had an interception, and that would have been the first one since the Mississippi State game a year ago that McCarron would have thrown. So he got away with one there. The Banks and Slay are two outstanding corners. They both have four interceptions coming into the game, and Slay should have had his fifth right there. Got both hands on it and just not able to bring it in. And so with that bubble, A.J. McCarron, 260 passes without throwing an interception. So harmlessly, it falls to the ground and second down at 10. Let's see if they go back to the formula of putting it in the hands of Eddie Lacy. Off the right side. And he got two or three. Brings up third down. And about seven. So Alabama two McCarran touchdown passes in the first half. And a Yeldon 11 yard run that was the opening score of the game. Shelley with the field goal. Mississippi State being shut out right now, a team that came in averaging almost 37 points a game. But they're playing a team that only gives you eight points a game. And they've got a goose egg on the board right now here in the third quarter. Third and seven for McCarron in the gun. Blitz is coming. Throws. Caught by Jones. It's, he was out of bounds. Christian Jones ran out of real estate over there. Corey Broomfield, the safety, was there with him. See, Corey Broomfield is a safety, but he actually started his career as a corner. So he's comfortable in man-to-man -man coverage situations, and that was straight man with a free safety. Broomfield was inside on the slot receiver and step-for-step step with Christian Jones. Cody Mandel set up to punt at midfield. Alabama doesn't have a real long ball field goal kicker. So they'll just play the percentages here, try to drop this inside the five, and it's caught at the one-yard line by John Fulton. That's how you do it. 34-yard knuckleball punt. You got a guy down there as they go up that chest bump who catches it for you. That makes your punter look good. So Mississippi State in a hole on the scoreboard by 24 and in a deep hole on offense when we come back. ESPN College Football Finale, brought to you by Walmart. Save money, live better. Walmart and Taco Bell. Sometimes you gotta live moss. Nick Saban's Crimson Tide looking to remain perfect, trying to stretch their winning streak to 12 games. They lead 24 to nothing with 11-10 remaining third quarter. And our Dr. Pepper road to the championship, which they won last year. And now Mississippi State starts at its own two-yard line. And if you're Ladarius Perkins, you don't like being seven yards deep in the end zone. Oh. 
Tyler Russell fakes it to Perkins. Sets to throw. Got it out to Perkins. Gets him a little breathing room out to the six yard line. Coming into the ball game, Mississippi State averaging just a shade under 400 yards a game of offense, only 107 before that play. And part of the reason they've had nine possessions, and this is the sixth time that they've started at their own 20 or worse. And uh, when you're going against a defense that leads the nation in every major category, and you have that kind of field position, it's doubly tough. And one time they had good field position starting in Alabama territory, they wasted it. Hey, look out. Russell just got rid of it as Damian Square knocks him down in the end zone. And we check in with Reese Davis. All right, Brad, Notre Dame and Oklahoma set up for a finish on ABC. The belldozer Blake Bell with the first rushing touchdown against the Irish this season. Tied at 13, nine and change to go in Norman. All right, Reese, keep us posted 24 to nothing. Top ranked Alabama here. Mississippi State with a third down and six at their own six. You got to be really careful if you're Tyler Russell. The fans are aware of that here at Bryant Denny. Again from his own end zone. Throws a strike and it's a first down. And off comes the helmet at D. Miller. He'll have to go out for a play as Lewis made the catch. Good job by Lewis knowing what he needed for the first down and making sure he got past that marker. Shows his number to the quarterback and a nice throw by Russell. John Fulton will come in for at least a play to take Miller's spot. Perkins with Griffin in there as well. He follows Griffin's blocking and he goes out close to another first down. I think part of the reason that play was successful, Alabama was a little bit late getting lined up. They tried to sub in a couple different defensive linemen. Brandon Ivory, number 62, was a little bit late getting in and getting lined up. And they're able to sneak a run in there for close to nine yards. You mentioned it in the Tennessee game that we did last week. In a perfect world, in the eyes of Nick Saban and Kirby Smart, they want every fit perfectly yeah. on defense with every guy in the right spot. You can't always be perfect. They want to match personnel. They want to match your formations, your motion, and stop every play. Second down a yard. Perkins counter. I don't think he got there. He might have lost a little bit. Benny Sanceri came flying around to make the stop. And I actually think he lost a half yard. So big third down here just to try to get out of the shadow of the goalpost. And Maybe switch field position a little bit, even if you have to punt it. Third and one. They hustle up to the line. And Perkins pops through there. Sincero made the stop again, but he got three yards on the carry. Yeah, that, that quick snap. They came out of the huddle, got lined up quickly, and snapped it quickly. And that is, uh, gave him a little bit of breathing room to get that first down on third and short. Now they go to a two tight end formation with a first down at the eight and a half minute mark of the third quarter. Again, I think Mississippi State has to try to throw the ball down the field. They, everything has been short, crossing route type things. They try to take something that could stretch the field a little bit. Again, Bumpus has only one catch. Empty backfield. Russell has time, throws high, but caught by Green, the tight end. Had a pickup of around six, maybe seven. One of the things that makes this Alabama defense so difficult is, you know, you typically play one of two ways defensively. You either play with two safeties or one safety, and the other safety is, is kind of up around the line of scrimmage. And you have to do that if you're having trouble stopping a team running. But if you can play two safeties back deep like they have right now and still stop the run with what you have around the box, that makes it very difficult if you're an offense going against them. Second and four for Russell. They bring an extra rusher, and he's going to get leveled, but he got the pass complete somehow. Clark and Nico Johnson really blasted Russell, but they pick up 13. The pressure that has come on Russell today has come mostly from linebackers. Again, another inside linebacker coming untouched and hitting Russell. 
Russell shows some courage staying in there and throwing, knowing he was going to get hit, getting the ball to Clark. Mom's saying, please leave my son alone. <laughs> he took a big time shot there. He's a strong kid, though. Now Russell goes out as a wide receiver. And it'll be Perkins on the direct snap. And that didn't go anywhere. That's the first time they've tried that tonight. Ed Stinson made the tackle. Stinson came into Tuscaloosa weighing about 240 pounds, and now he's about 282 pounds. Yeah. Was a Jack linebacker, which is one of their outside linebackers when he first started here. Has moved inside to a defensive end position with that added weight. And a very, again, a typical player on this defense. Solid, fundamentally sound, plays with great hands and leverage. Tenth play of the drive, play fake, and the throw to the far side. Complete to Green. Green on the sideline gets a first down. Stays in bounds. He didn't have a lot of room to work over there, but he tiptoes down the sidelines. If you can say tiptoe for a tight end that weighs 240, and yeah. he got 15 yards. And something you rarely see with this Alabama defense, a missed tackle. I think that was Milner who missed the tackle. Would have been short of the first down, the missed tackle, and all of a sudden, now Mississippi State in Alabama territory. Can they do anything with it, though? That's been the story when they get into Alabama territory. Remember, they had a field goal blocked. They wasted a couple of other opportunities, but right now they've got it working here. On the drive, Tyler Russell has only missed once. Play action, wants to go deep. On the sideline, he's got a man open and it's complete to Chris Smith, and Chris Smith drags a couple of tied players to the 13-yard line. Excellent play action fake. They kept both backs in to help the back and the tight end. Maximum protection for Tyler Russell to try to let him throw the ball down the field. They haven't been able to do this much. Good timing, good accuracy with the throw, and the maximum protection gave him the opportunity to make that play down the field. Now you've got to make a few more plays and get in that Alabama end zone if you're Mississippi State. Bumpus in motion. First down at the 13. And whistle stop play. Flags down. And Gabe Jackson, the left guard, might have gotten a head start. Let's see if it's a false start. Prior to the snap, false start, offense number 61. Five yard penalty, it remains first down. That's a call. And again, they get down there, yeah. and you're looking at the 13 yard line. Now you're looking at the 18 yard line. It's a whole different deal. Nonetheless, they still got an opportunity here under the five and a half minute mark. Tyler Russell, six out of seven on the drive. Now you got the play clock inside of 10 seconds right now. Tyler Russell needs to be aware of that as well. Got it away, play fake. Trouble in the pocket. And he throws, and it is caught somehow at wow. the six yard line. I don't know how he got that pass away and I don't know how Chris Smith made the catch. Well the ball really floated because he had to elude pressure from Adrian Hubbard. The ball really floated. He was on the left hash and he throws this to the right sideline. Since Siri was in there hit him as he throws and Dion Blue just wasn't able to get around the body of the receiver Smith to make the play. Adrian Hubbard actually got a yep. hand on that ball and he had to re clutch. And he did, and now they're trying to get a first down, and they've got it, first and goal. Folks at Brian Denny Stadium are quiet. They're not used to seeing anybody near their end zone. Yeah. And it is first and goal, Mississippi State. Well, they have given up so few touchdowns this season. I mean, even if teams have gotten in the red zone, they haven't scored touchdowns. They've only allowed five touchdowns and two field goals in the red zone this year. First and goal at the two. 14th play of the Bulldog drive. And it's Russell, and he's met at the one. He's got it inside the one-yard line. Big quarterback, 6'4", 220-pounder, trying to do it himself. He got halfway there. Man, this is a seven-minute drive, Led. <laughs> Don't see many of those against no. Alabama. No. Drive started inside their 20. Now it's at the Alabama one. Second down and goal. Two tight ends. High backfield. 
Second man through is Perkins. Did he get there? No. Close, but not quite. Lester and Ivory meeting. I think he got maybe another foot. <laughs> Well, again, if you're going to do anything against Alabama, they're going to make you earn it. I mean, you are going to have to fight for everything you get. And Mississippi State has fought all the way from inside their 20 to inside the one. But they're going to have to fight for this touchdown. Third and goal. They fake the toss. They throw to the end zone. And it's intercepted by Lester. What a beautiful play by Lester because there were two receivers out there and watch Lester right here. He's going to see the one receiver and feel the other one coming behind and he leaves the front receiver and goes to the back receiver for the interception. Just a beautiful instinct play by the safety Robert Lester and I said you got to fight to earn it and Alabama said no way. College football in high definition is presented by Vizio. You look in at Bryant Denny Stadium, our area of coverage is being provided by the MetLife Blimp. See how MetLife can provide the coverage you need. MetLife, I can do this. Mississippi State thought they could do it. They took the length of the field, the longest drive of their season, netted them nothing. Yeah. I mean, how many times have you ever heard 16 plays? 97 yards actually 102 yards because they had a penalty for five yards that set them back eight minutes and 23 seconds not zip wow Let's check in with holly well after he threw that interception tyler russell came over to the sideline dan mullen didn't yell at him didn't do anything too demonstrative they stood together and looked at the jumbotron watched the replay to see what went wrong and kind of slapped him on the head as this to say it's okay kid let's get out there and try it again and you saw the first interception in 135 tosses for him. Here's Yeldon. Wow. His feet are quick in the hole, and now they're quick to the outside. T.J. Yeldon across the 40, all the way out to midfield. 29 yards for the freshman. Well, again, watch his ability to cut in the hole. Change directions without losing speed. I mean, there's Bulldog defenders just diving after air. Excellent vision. Even better feet by T.J. Yeldon on that run. Gets it all the way out just on the Alabama side of the midfield stripe. First and ten. Final two minutes of the third quarter. And Yeldon goes for four more as we go out to Reese Davis. Reese. Brad Sports Center right now presented by Discover Card and as the NBA season starts on Tuesday James Harden won't be a member of the Oklahoma City Thunder league sources confirming to our Chris Broussard he is part of a six player deal he's on his way to the Rockets Notre Dame and Oklahoma Everett Golson scores from the one Manti Teo just got an interception if it stands up under review Irish up 20 to 13 with four and a half to go here 24 nothing Alabama in the waiting moments of the third quarter, A.J. McCarron, pressure coming from behind, and down he goes. And it's Cameron Lawrence, one of the few people that's put some pressure on him tonight. And that's the second sack of the night. Cameron Lawrence, Todd mentioned he had a good game against Alabama last year. Yeah, this was kind of a delay blitz, and he beats Quanjo, the left tackle. Kind of faked outside, came back inside under the bigger offensive tackle, and got the sack on McCarron. From the blind side. Lawrence out of Coldwater, Mississippi, one of the defensive captains, a senior. And that makes it third down and long. So Alabama hasn't tacked a lot of points on in this quarter, but they continue to grind away. They're going to take a timeout here with 49 seconds remaining in the third. They'll have a third and 14 following the timeout.
Get your NFL Sundays join it off right 10 o'clock Eastern Sunday NFL countdown Chris Berman and the gang with all the latest news and updates from stadiums around the league at 11 a.m. Eastern on ESPN News. Robert Flores, Matthew Barry, Tim Hasselbeck give you all the info you need to get your lineup set with fantasy football now. Sunday NFL countdown presented by IBM at 10 a.m. Eastern on, AS, on ESPN and fantasy football now presented by Papa John's 11 o'clock on ESPNU. 24 to nothing. Final 49 seconds, third quarter. Alabama took a timeout. They've got a third and long upcoming. Well, one thing the Mississippi State defense has been able to do a few times tonight is to put A.J. McCarron in this offense in some uncomfortable situations. A couple third and longs, a couple negative plays. Not many teams have done that to them. Three wideouts and a tight end out there for McCarron who got all kinds of protection, but he's going to come to Lacey across the middle, and Lacey gets down close to the first down, a couple yards short. And Bernardrick McKinney, who made the tackle, is a guy that's slow getting up. Well, the percentages here would be to, to punt the football, try to do the same thing you did before, have a guy go down there and catch it. End of the play it was McKinney who was trying to help out on the tackle. He got an arm in there and then he got hit friendly fire by one of his own guys. Yeah, he's I think a, it was Josh Boyd, yeah. big fella who rolled into him. The red shirt freshman. They think he has a chance to be a potentially an all SEC type player, very instinctive. Playmaker Boyd is down too after that collision with his own teammate. They got trainers all over the place for Mississippi State right now. Dan Mullen, a head coach, out there with him. Final half minutes of the third quarter. Again, if you're just joining us, Mississippi State came in their best start since 1999. Only the second start of seven and zero. In 113 years of football in Starkville. So they came in with high hopes, with the motto being, We believe. They've done a nice job defensively holding Alabama to just a nose uh, points here in the third quarter, but still trailed 24 to nothing. They missed opportunities, Todd, two times in the red zone. They missed a field goal, had it blocked. And then Tyler Russell, the guy you're looking at, threw an interception a few minutes ago in the end zone, and that stopped another drive, and they were down at the one yard line. Same thing happened last year. First half, two times into the red zone, no points. Fourth down to two, and AJ McCarron stays in there. And Alabama apparently going to go for it unless they're just trying to draw him offside. And now half the coaching staff for Mississippi State's out on the field. So Dan Mullen and Ken Williamson, the referee, having a discussion. Mississippi State didn't even have their defense out there when Alabama ran up to the ball. Now they do have everybody out there. Following two Mississippi State players being injured and walking off to the sideline. And while all that's going on, the clock expires to end the third quarter. It's the SEC on ESPN. It's the number one team in the SEC. Alabama at the end of three by 24. Before we start the fourth quarter, let's take a look at tonight's game track brought to you by Residence Inn. A.J. McCarron, another super efficient night. 16 out of 23, 208, and a couple more touchdowns without an interception. Tyler Russell, only 50% of his throws tonight, and he threw an interception in the end zone that took away a scoring threat. A missed field goal and an interception in the end zone, the two red zone trips for Mississippi State, and that's why they still have nothing on the scoreboard. 24 to nothing. As we head to the fourth, Brad Nessler, Todd Blackledge, Holly Rowe, and our ESPN crew from Tuscaloosa, where the number one team in the country is looking for their 12th straight win. AJ McCarron now sending. Well, are they going to snap it or are they just trying to draw him offside? They're taking a long time on this fourth and two, and apparently they're not going to snap it. 
Now he stands up. And they'll do what we thought they were going to do about 10 minutes ago, and that's punt the football. Yeah, I mean, there's no point. Not with that guy. He doesn't play around. There's no point in giving Mississippi State a shorter field. I mean, they're having a difficult enough time. They, even when they do drive the ball, they haven't been able to score. And McCarron is heading to the locker room. You know, the last time, near the end of the third quarter, he was standing with one of the coaches, and it looked like he was kind of wincing a little bit. And uh, maybe just going to go and check him out while they know that Mississippi State's going to have the ball here for at least a second or two. If AJ doesn't come back out, Blake Sims would be the guy that we had, would anticipate would come in for Alabama. And Dell really a short kick this time. Trying to clear everybody out of the way. And now Alabama. Robert Lester's the guy that ended up with a football, but let's see. I don't know. They're they're saying they got the ball, but I didn't see it hit a Mississippi State player. Might have hit him in the back. Deontay Skinner, the ball was kicked so short, and Skinner obviously had no idea where the ball was. Okay, there's a bounce. Yep. Oh, I don't know. I'm not sure. I think Lester took it maybe before it hit him in the back. Here's another look. I mean, Banks is yelling, get away from it, get away from it. Skinner has no idea where the ball oh, is, did. and it went right off his back into Lester's hands. Went right off the S and Skinner. Wow. He stays out there to play defense because Alabama's got it back. Can anything else go wrong for Mississippi State? And now quarterback is Blake Sims because A.J. McCarron's in the locker room. They have two quarterbacks in the game. Ely is the other quarterback out wide. Sims goes straight ahead after he fakes the fly sweep to Cyrus Jones. And there's Philip Ely coming into the huddle as well as we check in with Reese. All right, Brad, if anybody was doubting Notre Dame, it's time to give up that notion. 23-13 in Norman against Oklahoma. The last chance has been that kind of night for the Sooners. A minute 41 seconds away from going to 8-0 for Brian Kelly's Irish. Boy. It was everybody's got to start to believe, huh? I think believe in them and believe in Kansas State. Everybody's known about Alabama. Nobody's doubted Alabama. But those two teams have been playing at a very consistent level. Kansas State scored 55, I think, again today against Texas Tech, and that Notre Dame defense is for real. Oregon put up 70. Alabama here pitching a shutout. While they haven't scored in the second half, they've been so efficient, and their defense so stingy against Mississippi State, who also came in undefeated. Blake Sims staying in there at quarterback again. A.J. McCarron went to the locker room a couple of minutes ago. Third down and three. And ball <laughs> never got snapped. Everybody except Barrett Jones and if who kept I, his hand on the football. If I had to guess, I'd guess that Barrett was right <laughs> I and would Blake too. Sims was not. Ball starts. Offense, number 65. Penalty. It remains third down. Well, he was the only lineman that didn't take off. They call it on Chance Warmack. Could have been any of the guys on the front wall with the exception of number 75. So it backs it up to third down and eight. Holly was telling us that Barrett Jones was a, a Scrabble master, Scrabble champion when he was young, and now is into the words with friends thing, which a lot of my family's into as well. So is Holly. She's going to challenge him, I'm sure, for the rest of the year. And that pass to Lacey on the run. Eddie Lacey's gone. Touchdown, Alabama. Philip Ely, 27-yard touchdown pass. I wasn't sure Lacey was going to be able to hang on to this. Ely threw it pretty hard for such a short throw. It was well-designed, well-set up. Lacey's just going to slip right past the line of scrimmage, turn around, and he had to catch it twice, but there were no Mississippi State defenders anywhere near him. Shelley in for the point after. The kick is good. They only had to go 28 yards following the punt coming off. The back of Skinner. The backup quarterback getting in the act, Eddie Lacy. 31 to nothing, Alabama.
ESPN College Football is available anytime, anywhere on your computer or mobile device via WatchESPN.com and the Watch ESPN app. Don't forget Monday Night Football coming up 6.30 Eastern. Start things off with Monday Night Countdown served by Applebee's. Then at 8.30, Patrick Willis and the 49ers take that top-ranked defense against the Cardinals and Larry Fitzgerald. The NFC West matchup. 49ers-Cardinals Monday Night, 8.30 Eastern. On ESPN, Mike Tirico and John Gruden will have the call for you. AJ McCarron's back on the sideline. Meanwhile, his understudy, Philip Ely, threw his fourth pass of the season, completing his third, and that one went 27 yards for a touchdown. It was odd, too, in that possession. He was out there at wide receiver a couple plays when the other quarterback was in there taking snaps from the shotgun, Blake Sims, and then when he got under center, he threw a touchdown. Here's Lewis from the five yard line. Lewis pops through. Out across the 40 to the 41. The ball comes out. Does Alabama have it again? Nice return, and then he coughed it up at about the 42 yard line. And Alabama's got it. They came into the game leading the nation in turnover margin with plus 17. You can't beat Alabama if you don't take care of the football. A big hit. I think Sinceri came up with it. The helmet right on. That's a wide the receiver, Christian Jones, yeah. who put the hit. Wow. And you know what? Ledge, oddly enough, they came in, you said plus 17. And Alabama was third in the country at plus 14. I think they just flip flop yeah. spots. Well, they're first in every other category <laughs> defensively. Why not that one, too? Blake Sims in at quarterback. You saw A.J. McCarron back on the sideline, though. The previous play is under further review. Earlier on the field, the ball was fumbled and recovered by Alabama. Looked that way to us, but they'll take a look again. Upstairs, Doyle Jackson is our replay official. And we'll take a break while they take a look. 12.55 remaining. Alabama pitching a shutout. ESPN College Football Finale. Brought to you by the 2013 Mitsubishi Outlander Sport. And CDW. People who get it. College football finale, 31 to nothing. That doesn't mean that we're all done doing games, is it, together, partner? No. Oh, okay, just a finale for tonight. Yeah. Okay. Mississippi State, their special teams haven't been tonight. They lost a fumble on the kickoff right there. They had one on the punt muff a little while ago that led to a 27-yard touchdown pass, and they missed a field goal that was blocked. That's not very special. And you got to be good in every phase to have a chance against this team, and they've never given themselves much of a chance. Here's Yeldon. And he goes for about five as we check in with Reese Davis. Reese, what do you got? Brad, I just want to show you a little icing on the cake in Norman. There's still 19 seconds to go in the game, but 23 13 and Theo Riddick, after Oklahoma failed on fourth down, would go into the end zone. Fighting Irish going to be 8 and 0. Oh, and here come the debates. Will it be Notre Dame, Oregon, or K State if they all finish unbeaten? So Notre Dame. Went to Norman in uh, 1957 and stopped a 47 game Bud Wilkinson winning streak and now they take away the hopes of the Sooners. Any kind of hopes they had for BCS championship game. And first down run by Yell. Let's check in with Holly. Well guys the athletic trainers are saying that AJ has a bruise on his upper back not out towards the shoulder but more in towards the back area. They had him come out throw a couple footballs but then I saw them go over and consult with Nick Saban. You know they're up 31 nothing. When do you think you put him back in here with LSU Lou, LSU looming next week. So we'll see if they're cautious with their quarterback with that bruised back. I certainly would be. Yeah. Tanya Drake is in the backfield for the first time. Gets the call off the right side inside the 30 to the 29. And they can just keep running the ball. They can use up a few more minutes of this clock. And it's actually good sometimes to get some of your guys, the backup quarterback, some work because there may come a time when it isn't just the fourth quarter with a big lead that you need them. 
Well, I would be surprised if this isn't the last possession for this starting offensive line as well. You know, get those guys out, rest it up. You know, LSU is off this week. Right. So that will be a well-rested team that they face in Baton Rouge next week. And for Mississippi State, this was the beginning of a really tough stretch of football games in their schedule. And they're going to have to regroup after their first loss of the season. Drake, another freshman, blasts his way for 11 more yards. He's the little guy, 204 pounds. Out of Powder Springs, Georgia, another freshman. He's the number three guy behind Lacey and Yeldon. Here we go. All the offensive line coming out after that first down. There you go. You called that one play. <laughs> Perfect call, partner. Now give those guys a rest. The big eaters come out to a standing ovation. That's awesome. You know, I mean, how many times do O-linemen get to come out of the game like that in mass and get, and get cheered for? Them? That's beautiful. <laughs> that is. That's like senior night stuff. First down at the 18. High snap. Sims pulls it down, goes straight ahead, spins his way for three, maybe four. Tough run. Maybe more than that. That looked like it was going to be no gain or maybe a loss. And Blake Sims spins his way for four or five yards. Ten minutes remaining. Alabama threatening to score again. Well, they came into this game averaging about 33 more points than their opponent. They've got 31 right now. And that should be a sure thing to get three more at least out of this drive. And they have scored 33 or more in every game. Trailing for a total of 15 seconds. That one just blows <laughs> I know, me away. I know. I was sitting there thinking the exact same thing. <laughs> oh, nice move in the hole by Drake. And he's got it first and goal at the seven yard line. You hear the PA announcer say first down Alabama, and then the crowd in unison said roll tide. And they've got it. Six straight running plays, first and goal. And the football is at the six. Thank you, partner. It's at the seven. Drake stays in there, as does Sims. Chewing up clock, chewing up yardage, chewing up Mississippi State right now. Down to the five, maybe to the four to Kenyon Drake. Despite what's going to be a lopsided loss, you can't take away from the nine game winning streak, third longest in the country that Mississippi State Dan Mullen came in here with. Yeah. But there's been a lot of people, we said three hours ago or so, when you saw the rest in peace signs for Halloween, a lot of people come in here and rest in peace yeah. when they leave. Well, you know, it's interesting. Dan Mullen told me on Thursday, he said, you know, we're excited to be in this game and we know it's a huge game, but quite honestly, the A&M game next week might be more important because regardless of what we do in this one, that one looms large. Drake's going to just cruise into the corner of the end zone. Touchdown, Alabama. Four-yard scoring run by the third string tailback. Alabama not only with a shutout by its defense, that was not any kind of style points. That's just backup guys wanting yeah. to play and play hard and capping off a 43 yard drive again with eight plays in almost five minutes. And the extra point is good. And it goes to 38 to nothing, Alabama. Well, there may be doubt about. Who's number two, who's number three, who's number four, who's number five? There's no doubt about who's number one. The SEC on ESPN from Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Our aerial coverage provided by the MetLife Blimp. See how MetLife can provide the coverage you need. MetLife, I can do this. Go Snoopy, go. Alabama, 38. And their line got to come out to a standing ovation. There's the leader of the line, Baron Jones, the Outland Trophy winner from a year ago. How about this guy, Scott Cochran? Strength and conditioning coach. 
never slows down, and then in the fourth quarter, he goes absolutely ballistic. No matter what the score is, this is what he does the entire fourth quarter for Alabama. I got to think decaf somewhere along the line. <laughs> Here's the kick. A yard deep, Robert Johnson bringing it out. Johnson, a little bit of a seam. And nice return again. Let's check in with Holly. Well, they called Tuscaloosa T-Town, but I've decided it's for title town. Last spring was unprecedented, winning national championships. First of all, Mick Potter led the ladies golf team to a national championship. And then Sarah Patterson, back-to-back -back national championships for women's gymnastics. And then softball won the Women's College World Series in Oklahoma City. And Nick Saban, of course, with the crystal ball, won the national championship for football. This culture all builds on each other. Nick Saban is very involved with the other sports. He told us that he meets with recruits Friday after practice. He met with four gymnastics recruits, so they're all building on each other's success. That's pretty awesome, as if Nick wasn't busy. Here's a throw by the backup quarterback, Dak Prescott, complete to Robert Johnson. Dak Prescott has played a lot this season during the course of regular games. Uh, kind of the Wildcat Tim Tebow type package. Van Mullen didn't want to use that in the game tonight. Didn't feel it was an effective thing to use against Alabama's defense, but he's played a lot in that role and made some productive plays. Right now, he's just in to get a little playing time here to finish out the ball game. Johnson dropped that pass, so it's second down and 10. Josh Robinson in there behind Prescott. They fake it to him. Prescott throws complete this time. That's first down toss out to the 48 yard line to Johnson on the other side. Alabama tonight 14 points off three Mississippi State turnovers. So that means what's that le uh, ledge now 126 points off turnovers to three <laughs> 126 to three in points off turnovers for Alabama so far this year through almost eight games. Got a flag down. Clock stopped with 7.25 remaining. So Alabama, their big game looming ahead. Todd mentioned LSU off this weekend. Personal foul, face mask, defense number 44. 15 yards from into the run, automatic first down. So the two teams that split last year, Alabama winning the bigger one, the second go around for the national title and game day, built by the Home Depot, will be in Baton Rouge next Saturday. For number one against number six. That's how they're ranked right now. And that might change a little bit with what's happened today. We'll have to wait and see tomorrow when the BCS standings come out. Alabama, we know, is still going to be number one. Prescott throws this one away. You know, think about this with this Alabama defense. And again, I, I'm just incredibly impressed with the consistency that they have played with this year. Right now, Mississippi State has 226 total yards since the 2011 Capital One game, which we did when they pounded Michigan State 49 to 7. That was off a 10 and 3 regular season record. Since that time, they've only allowed one opponent to gain over 300 yards of offense. Wow. And that was Georgia Southern, who runs a triple option. Everybody else they've held under 300. Well, here comes another possible turnover. Prescott got back on top of it, way back at the 45 yard line. They are working on 22 games of holding teams under 300 yards. Well, that's just amazing. Denzel Duvall was there to make sure that Prescott couldn't retrieve that ball and try to do something with it. So it's way back at the 43. So we approach six and a half minutes. Empty backfield for Dak Prescott. Pumps and now throws near the sideline, complete to Johnson again. He's going to bring up fourth down on a mile. Bradley Silve, redshirt freshman, made the stop over there on the corner. D. Miller's night done. John Fulton, his backup, his night done. Silve back there getting some experience. And it's fourth down and 17. 
They don't pick this up. It might be the last time they touch it on offense tonight. Pump fake. And a deep throw in the middle. And a good one it is. Lewis with the catch, and it is a first down. Nice throw by Prescott. Yeah. Prescott's shown a little something throwing the football. Normally, when he's come in in the games prior to this, it's been to run around the goal line or short yardage. Showing some nice ability to throw the ball in the pocket. Good strong arm. Four Crimson Tide defenders basically in a box around the receiver who hauled it in at the 18 yard line. First down. Remember, all their other red zone trips tonight have ended in disaster. Josh Robinson to the outside, and now a first down run, and he's still taking would be tacklers down to a first and goal for Mississippi State. Remember, this drive is happening against a lot of the number two or number three defenders for Alabama, but nonetheless, Mississippi State not giving up, trying to avoid the shutout. Guarantee that guy hasn't given up coaching to stop. Nope. The score. Kirby Smart, defensive coordinator as well. First and goal. Prescott rolls, throws to the end zone, and it's caught for a touchdown. And it's Robert Johnson who had three catches on this drive. Nice Two drive. yard touchdown pass. Nice drive by Dak Prescott. Finally on the board, but it took to 439 remaining in the football game for Mississippi State. <laughs> Devin Bell to try to cap off the only scoring drive of the Knights and does as Mississippi State goes 63 yards in a little over three and a half minutes. They finally get on the board. 38 to 7, Alabama. Let's take a look back with our Mitsubishi Motors Drive recap. Well, there was one problem on a special team. Skinner had the ball go off his back. That led to a short touchdown. Right here to Eddie Lacy. Had to take a fastball 27 yards for the score off Ely, the backup quarterback. And that was the last time that Alabama scored, but uh, they pretty much scored at will tonight. They did give up a late touchdown just a moment ago. And Kirby Smart and Nick Saban are on the sideline letting the, the number twos know about it. Because last week they gave up a score at about this point in the game to Tennessee that was meaningless as well. But at any rate, 63 yard drive and nine plays. And the shutout is averted. And now we'll see if Devin Bell's going to kick on side here. Or if he'll let it fly. He'll kick away. And from the goal line, Cyrus Jones. Cyrus out across the 30. And let's check in with Holly. Well, guys, you saw it as the second team defense that just allowed that score ran off the field. Nick Saban greeted number 24, Geno Smith, a freshman, and he ripped him. Both he and Kirby Smart were screaming at the defense, run, run off the field. Now, this is the second team in a blowout. Barrett Jones, the center, told us that Nick Saban, because he coaches like he does in moments like this, even though it doesn't seem like it matters, has changed these guys' lives. Barrett said, when I get into the workforce, I'm not going to work as hard as the guy next to me. I'm going to work as hard as I possibly can work. It's changed everybody on this team's life and the way they look at things because Coach Saban is coaching us every single second. Yeah, he sure is. Well, it's, it's the idea of playing to a standard that you set for yourself, regardless of what the scoreboard says, regardless of who's on the field at any particular time. And that that's, that's the message and that's the style, the philosophy that Nick Saban has brought to, to Alabama. He did it at LSU, he did it at Michigan State. That's, you know, and that's, it's very similar, I think, probably to Bill Belichick, too, where he got a lot of his training, mm -hmm. is, is to do your job, do it the best you possibly can every single play. And, uh, Holly mentioned earlier, Barrett Jones, he said, we came back about three days after winning the national title last year, and the coaches said, 
Would you consider moving to center which Holly told the story that he obviously did and is doing with great success. But in saying that as Sims goes for a first down run and spins out to the 48 yard line I said to Bear Jones I said you know you mentioned three days you enjoyed it. I said are you going to come back sometime after your NFL career or running for governor of Alabama and back come back to a homecoming like tonight and go wow. We were really good and look at the rings I have on my fingers. He said, you know, maybe someday I'll be yeah. able to have time to think about that. But right now they're just thinking about the next game and in about uh, three and a half minutes they can start thinking about LSU. And that's what they will do. They will enjoy this for probably about 12 hours and then LSU will be on their mind. If not in the locker room immediately following. Confusion in the backfield there at a tight end in motion. And Sims trying to hand off to Kenya Drake. So flags down. Well, as you look ahead to that game a little bit for Alabama. Right the snap, ball start, offense number eight, five yard penalty. It remains first down. LSU defensively will be the biggest challenge that Alabama has faced. I mean, athletically, talent wise, defense. They have the ability to line up and play nose to nose with Alabama's offense. The big question for LSU, I, I think a lot of people, myself included, expected the passing game to be a lot further along with Zach Mettenberger than it is. And if they aren't a balanced offensive team against Alabama, even at home in Baton Rouge, they will have a very difficult time beating the Crimson Tide. Great. Wow. Tough run. Taking Calhoun with him for 12 more yards. Down to two and a half minutes. Alabama will be 8 0, 5 0 in the conference. It will be their 12th straight win, continuing the longest winning streak in the country. They've won their last, what will soon be 11 games by at least 19 points. And it'll be the fifth straight win over Mississippi State in this series that uh, started in 1896. Second down and three. Stretch play to Drake. He is running hard. It just shows you how deep Alabama is even missing a couple of running backs that Todd was talking about earlier. You know we talked about you talked about balance and we thought LSU would be more balanced and have a better passing attack. Look at this season for Alabama rushing 1712 yards passing 1776 last season there was a nine yard difference between the run and the pass. you can't you can't script that no you can't and you can't even begin to try to do it without offensive line play like Alabama's had the last couple of years I mean it has to start with that. You can call the plays as much as you want, but you better have some guys that can make it happen. And those, those big uh, space eaters up front are the guys that make it happen. Brent Calloway on the last carry. Talk about good recruiting classes and good programs. How about Kentucky? John Calipari's Wildcats. We've got an exclusive multi part series of coverage for you. One of the top basketball programs ever. All access Kentucky, Wednesday, 7 Eastern on ESPN. I grew up a huge Kentucky basketball fan. My dad was an assistant football coach at Kentucky when I was in junior high school and uh, moved down there and watched Kentucky when Kevin Grevy was oh, yeah. leading the way for the Wildcats. Joe B. Hall was the head coach. And, uh, huge Wildcat fan. Well, they're ranked in the top five in the preseason polls again. And much like Alabama football, Kentucky basketball dominant. And the final half minute. <laughs> so we're going to need one more snap. The official said there's a two second difference on the play clock. You're going to have to take one more snap, coach. Alabama ran the ball. Their final 15 snaps from scrimmage as we've got a flag down. Five yards. Still second down. All right. Because the foul occurred inside of the minute in the fourth quarter, it'll be a 10 seconds for traction for the game clock. Ball game is over. So, Nick Saban, who will turn 61 on Halloween, 
has another treat to add to his bag of tricks here tonight. 38 to 7, Alabama all over Mississippi State. Sports Center is coming up next. It's going to do it for us. Warren Todd and Holly, Brad Nessler saying so long from Tuscaloosa. Number one is still number one with a bullet. Well, Coach Saban, if anybody was.